So we can see, I'll move this down here. These are our normal CAN packets, our binary stuff that we were talking about. So I'll tell when you USB in, you can do this CAN overlay. And if you remember all the weird stuff we were seeing on the computer, it will decode it for you. So I'm gonna move this back up to here. So this is our CAN ID. So one CD, so we have a three byte, so it's probably UDS protocol. We have a three, yeah, uh, I misspoke. Three alphanumeric digit CAN ID, and then we've got some data stuff about the CAN, which we're not going to get into at all. And then this big long frame here is our actual frame of data that's coming across CAN. But the problem is, so let me... Hold on this camera a little bit differently. So I'm gonna hit play. And then we're gonna zoom back out. I think it was 150, I don't know. And I got a phone call right in the middle of that explanation, so I don't really remember where we were. So we've zoomed out to 50 milliseconds per division. And so it's decoding all of those CAN frames, data packets, et cetera, make this bigger. The problem is, so, each one of these IDs are going to be from one specific module to another specific module. The intellectual property part that no one's ever going to give us is decoding these. So if I just hit pause or stop. So for example, 0C1 in hex, that's going to be from a given module to another module, and it's going to send all of this data across, and then that's how they communicate. But we don't know which ones are from the body controller to the engine controller. Likewise, multiples of these can be from the body controller to the engine controller. But we don't know which one contains the start message. So the only way that we can really figure this out is I got to dig up some old tool that I don't even know if works anymore. And what we can do is we can record everything that we've recorded now. And then we can unplug the body controller, record everything again. And then we'll have to dump all that data in Excel and we'll get an ID list of a delta. So when the body controller sending messages, some of these will show up. When we unplug the body controller, some of these will not show up. And then we could filter with the other tool. We can filter on just the delta messages and see if we have any changes in those when we go from run to crank. That's the only thing I can think to do because like I really... I don't know where else to go with these two. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this circuitry is all good because we can read it via PID data. I just don't know if the body controller is not sending the message out. Um, I really, I'm kind of leaning towards PCM. This is just my, my live thought. I'm leaning towards the PCM because if this, so back to these messages, if for example, zero F1, if that's from the body controller to the engine controller, just as a random example, if this message disappears, no, I shouldn't say that either. Ignore everything I just said. Uh, I was going to say, if that message disappears, this controller should set a code that says, hey, I'm missing a message from this. But it's not going to be missing. It's just going to be the data part. So the data bytes are going to be different. That's what we would look for. Ah, man, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this. I'm really leaning. Either we got a body controller or engine computer. And I don't know which it is. And I don't know how to test between these two.